winter finally arrived in Georgia, and of course, as soon as it does, uh, I have an issue where I have to work on my vehicle outside. It's about uh, 40 degrees, which is really cold for us. I've got to replace the radiator on my 1999 Dodge Ram. Now, I know the Dodge Ram videos aren't necessarily the most popular, but uh, this is something that I thought might be able to help. Uh, some of y'all might have some questions on how to change your radiator. It's generally the same for most cars, only getting to the radiator and getting the radiator out is typically the biggest problem. The good thing about a Dodge Ram, especially an older one, is it should be a fairly simple process. So it should be because we're always running into something that delays me a couple hours, a broken bolt or some BS. Uh, of course, I'm lucky enough to not have any rust down here. Mm, maybe I'll get lucky. So this is the radiator um, right here on, on Dodge Ram. Most, most people should know that. The good thing about a Dodge Ram is the grill moves up with the with the hood. There's a few things we'll have to do. Uh, obviously, our reservoirs will have to come off of this side for windshield washer and this side for overflow, uh, they just pop off. So that'll be super easy. I have to get this hose out of the way. What, what happened with this one is what typically happens when a radiator goes bad, uh, and I'm not talking about a radiator that's been seeing a lot of rust and corrosion or had a stick punch to it or something, but just general old age, these plastic tanks on the side tend to stress over time and they will, even, if, even though they're rubber mounted, uh, they will still crack uh, as this gets brittle. So you, you can't see it, but right here I have a crack just underneath where this is clamped in. Once this gets hot and everything fills with fluid and you have fluid returning and coming in and returning and everything, uh, this gets filled and as soon as you park and there's no more flow, it will just start pouring out of that crack because that crack expands and it just, just start pouring. As long as you're driving, it doesn't really leak. But, uh, once you park with it being hot, it just starts pouring out. So here's the replacement. Uh, this is aftermarket replacement, uh, about a hundred bucks. So that's not too bad. I've had good luck with, with these. This is a Spectre brand, I think. I've had pretty good luck with them. I've put a couple of those in different vehicles. I don't have any cooling problems necessarily in that truck. I never have. And, uh, and I'm not in a super hot climate or a super cold climate. So um, realistically, I don't have to go back OEM with it. I don't have to worry about a third row or anything like that. So there's a few things when you're replacing a radiator that you have to think about. I know obviously I'm gonna to have to take the hose off the top and the bottom. So this is the top one. The bottom one will be on this side, straight down there underneath that, looks like a dirt dauber nest or something. When I take that one out, I'm gonna have fluid loss. So I wanna put something in there to capture the fluid. Take the shroud loose, which the shroud comes loose with bolts on the side. I've had the shroud loose before, it's not too difficult. Once you get the shroud loose um, and you drain the radiator, which the radiator does have a pet cock down here on this end, I believe, down there to drain, this whole radiator should just pull out of the way. This is probably one of the simpler radiators to take in and out. Of course, you have to pull out these little these little pieces. There's some push pins, so don't lose those, don't break those. There's also these transmission lines uh for a transmission cooler that's built into this um that you have to take loose so be careful there you might lose some some fluid well let's uh get started because it's not getting any water check out the four shroud bolts uh those are 10 millimeter you can see the pet cock possibly right here uh, that's how I drain the radiator. If you don't mind radiator fluid or uh, antifreeze going everywhere, you could just more or less drain the radiator by taking the, the lower hose off. Of course, if you ever spill any fluid, make sure that you wash off your driveway. You don't want any, any of your animals getting sick. <coughs> you might have some trouble with these uh, two side tanks. There's a little um, piece that sits in this hole and a couple holes on the other side that keeps you from being able to pull it up. You just gotta get something in there and pry a little bit, pry that out a little bit and then they'll pop right off. So there's only two bolts actually holding the radiator in. It's these two at the top with the, uh, the where the rubber mounts are, and those are also 10 millimeter. I took the transmission lines off. This line was, both of them are 11, well, both of them are technically 11 sixteenths or 18 millimeters. So I took this one off and then that one, the whole piece was screwing out. And so I just went ahead and unscrewed it uh, from the radiator. And you can kind of see what that looks like. That's not how you're gonna wanna do it. I'm gonna have to get this off. Um, it's a compression fitting. I'm not sure how that compression fitting works. Uh, the new radiator already has this piece on it. So uh, again, I, I didn't really look online on how to do this. So I'm gonna have to look at that compression fitting. I'll show y'all how to do that. 
So, so far I've only taken out four bolts and these two lines and then two clamps. But realistically, I've only used a few tools so far, a screwdriver uh, to pry right here, um, an 11 16 wrench, a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. And there you have it. The reason it just comes out with the two bolts, you can see dirt dauber nest, you can tell it's an old farm truck. But the reason there's only two bolts holding it is they just go down in the grommets. One of the grommets stuck to the bottom, I'll have to get that off. Uh, the new kit comes with new grommets. So we'll start looking at how that compression fitting over there works for the transmission line and then uh, getting the new radiator set in place. All right, this is not the tie, this is not a reusable fitting like a lot of, uh, a lot of them are. This actually is, um, once it's pressed down there, it's in there. I have to replace this section of line from what I can tell. It's going to remove this piece from the new radiator and screw it into there using the uh, using that bottom nut there. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that. Uh, I don't know what it is. radiator is technically in I uh, still have to hook up the, the coolant lines got the transmission lines hooked up these are flared brass fittings uh, you don't necessarily need Teflon tape uh, but I did go ahead and put a little Teflon tape around the um, around the threads especially down there because I actually screwed the old whatever you call that the old uh, the old port into the uh, brass fitting inside the transmission cooler in here and the one that the new one that I took out had a little bit of Teflon tape on it uh, so I did the same. Of course, it's still a brass flared fitting, so you shouldn't need that as long as you get it tight. But a little bit of prevention goes a long way sometimes. It's always good if you do have an issue to replace your cap uh, when you do replace your radiator. Uh, that cap's actually not the original cap. That's a fairly new cap anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that. All right, so I've got the clips in place to mount the shroud again. I'm going to go ahead and get the hoses on, then remount the shroud. <coughs> and I'll hook up the bottles, and then we'll... Uh, start filling it and I'll talk a little bit about that and then uh, hopefully that'll be it one more FYI always check your lower hose it's good to replace those also whenever you replace your radiator there should be a spring <coughs> in your lower hose and that keeps it from from collapsing on itself uh, under under vacuum or under pressure make sure that spring doesn't get lost make sure that uh, it's in there it's in good uh, shape if you're going to reuse your your um, coolant tube your coolant line remember when i said there will always be something that's going to delay 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 so this bottom hose clamp i'm gonna have to go get a replacement i wasn't anticipating that because it looks like it was in good shape but it's got a little bitty break right there and so whenever you close it to try to clamp it that break pushes in and doesn't allow me to get it big enough to go over the uh the inlet or that so i've got to go into the store and get one of those all right everything's back in uh i don't have the windshield washer bottle back on yet but uh, everything else is in and on and tight. So now it's time to fill it full of fluid and crank her up and see what happens. You should always fill it from the, from the highest point because you don't want any air bubbles to develop that may cause your engine to overheat. I have my truck on a slight angle right now to make sure this is the top, uh, that this is the highest point and that's where I'll fill from. You should uh, crank your car uh, after you fill it or as you're filling it, as you're topping off. Uh, you should crank the car and you should turn the heater on full blast that way you make sure that that the fluid is going through the whole system including the heater core and everything else so uh, i'm going to start doing that and then we'll see if we have any issues if you do you may have to burp it with the cap uh, let it run for a minute without a cap uh, my old grand cherokee that i did this on uh, ha actually had a port uh, up on top on top of the inlet that allowed you to unscrew it and burp it and and then also fill from so different vehicles will be different ways. This Dodge Ram, you should just fill it from here. While that's warming up, uh, here's all the tools I had to use. Uh, so you can tell it's not that big of a deal. I used an 11 16, so that could also be an 18. I wound up using two of them, but you could probably get by with one uh, it, because I also used an adjustable. I used a smaller adjustable that I didn't have to have just because it's easier to get into a tight spot. Uh, a 10 millimeter uh, with a little extension and a small ratchet and then a pair of uh, channel locks and a screwdriver. And that's it, and, and I had to go buy a new, uh, a new hose clamp. So as you can see, it's not that big of a job. 
Uh, realistically, probably get by one of these and one of these, um, a 10 millimeter and a pair of channel locks, and that's it. So it's up to temp now. You don't set the temp when the thermostat opens and the top line gets stiff. It didn't go above the thermostat temp. Came right back down, so uh, so it doesn't doesn't appear to have any pockets of air or anything like that. Uh, so I filled the radiator, uh, and then um, I went ahead and made sure that the overflow uh, bottle was also to the full point. So there is one thing I forgot to do, and hopefully y'all call me out on it. Anytime you work under the hood of a car or under a car, and you're working on anything, you know, even if it's not electrical, you should always disconnect the battery just in case you arc something, just in case you touch something you shouldn't. Uh, it insulates you and the vehicle from from damage i didn't do that whenever you do this make sure you take uh the negative terminal off the battery so this is not a chinese made uh item this is actually made in canada so again this is a specter i've used it a few times and it's uh in different vehicles and they've always worked well for me guys it is very cold and i'm gonna end the video uh this all is a success hopefully this gives you the knowledge you need to tackle a very easy simple job uh, like replacing a radiator and a Dodge Ram. My main goal is to try to make sure that everyone understands that just with a little bit of courage, you can work on your own vehicle. You don't have to spend a ton of money. This would have cost me a, a pretty good little sum if I'd have had someone do it for me. Uh, I did it myself. It, if it hadn't been for that one broken clamp, it would have taken about an hour and a half. I mean, that's it and on, a, on, on a Gen 2 Dodge Ram. Even on a car where I've had to take the whole front off, it's only taken me two or three, maybe four hours at the most when some things went wrong with some clips and things on some other cars to replace radiators. Stuff like that's super easy. It's almost like a brake job. But with a little bit of courage and some very basic tools, you can do that yourself and probably save a whole lot of money. Guys, thanks for watching. I know these aren't very exciting videos, but there are some videos of the Corvette and the Jeep coming up where I actually use the vehicles, not just work on the vehicles. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, if, if this helped you in any way, please hit the thumbs up, uh, please hit the subscribe button, and uh, guys, have a great day. Go dogs.